I hate him so much. How are we supposed to fill with all this noise pollution? We thought it'd be cool to talk to you about our degrees here at St. Andrews to give you a little bit more information about what we study, getting to know us as individuals, and hopefully it'll help you guys choose here. I study English and Middle Eastern studies. And I study English and modern history. So I've kind of always known that I wanted to be in an industry and in a degree where I'm doing a lot of writing. A lot of writing. <laughs> and a lot of reading too. <laughs> I knew that I always loved English from when I was about about 11 years old. I actually don't know how I got so interested in history. When I was like in year 10, grew more interested in learning about history of Iran and that's why I decided to apply for a history degree. But then at the end of last year, I decided to change my degree from pure history to English and Middle Eastern studies. <laughs> so it was much the same for me in terms of me being an art student and actually preferring essays over to like sciences or maths. So you can't get more essay than English and history basically. I didn't actually apply for either of those courses here though. I have taken the flexible degree structure to a new extreme here at St Andrews. I actually applied for classics. So in first year I studied classics which is Latin, Greek and I also studied English literature with that. Oh my question is, I'm not trying to offend anyone who does classics. Wow. What do you actually do with a classics degree? What do you actually do with an English degree? What can you really do with a classics degree? It's a dead language. Like what did you want to do with your <laughs> it wasn't making any difference. I was planning on doing a law conversion. Like, it doesn't matter what I do here. This doesn't count. <laughs> oh my gosh, my parents are gonna kill me that I've said that. So I studied ancient Greek, Latin, classical studies, which is more looking at the literature and the history of the period with English literature in first year. My Latin did not last very long. That went straight away. And then at the end of first year, I decided that I was going to take English with modern history. You can't really get much different between modern history and classics. The really good thing about the flexible degree structure here at St. Andrews is that you could do modules from practically any discipline because we know some people who do physics and english it's a very flexible structure you can literally take almost any degree with another subject most people take three subjects so you'll take three subjects in sub honors which are your first two years in st andrews but like tom there are some switching around i also like me i didn't do persian no history. it is very true you can come to st andrews starting off with one degree and you can definitely end up leaving with a completely different one which is what we'll probably both end up doing so in our first year of english there were a lot of texts you do a text a week. So the text could be anything from a collection of poetry, Dickens novel. The module that we did was called Culture and Conflict. They actually take feedback from us at the end of each module. I know for a fact that one of the texts that was on there last year is no longer on it this year. <laughs> Not at all your fault. That's the tea. In the first term you will study a text a week covering the period from like the Victorians to essentially modern day. Too modern for my text. <laughs> the most recent one was like 2003. Is he me? This is gonna be in the background of the entire video. No, listen, I'm gonna have to call the police. I'm trying to film a video. Can we move to my bedroom? Because this is not working. Oh, change backdrop. Okay. This is cozy. <laughs> New backdrop. <laughs> Also, the acoustics mm. here are... Hello. So, you can hear it, right? Should I open the window slightly? Why is recording so stressful? How do you open this window? <laughs> Don't mind me while I die over here. <laughs> We've had to change our backdrop because there's this really annoying drummer who's been bothering us for the past two weeks. How it works here is usually there's 50% coursework, 50% exam. Coursework is usually divided up into two essays. And the exam is usually divided up into two questions. The first question will be close reading of a text of your choice. And the second question will be more of a thematic, more of a scholarly essay in terms of looking at larger ideas about the text and larger narrative themes and stuff like that. Yeah. And the same thing is then repeated in second semester. The only difference is, is you go further into the past and you study everything from like the 1600s to the Romantic and Gothic period. It's 11 texts each semester. I did comparative literature for a semester, so I had a lot of reading to do. They were quite chunky. Chunky? <laughs> it's a lot of reading. From first year, my favourite two lecturers. Oh my gosh, we're from... now naming names. <laughs> what if the tutors see this? Were Dr. Lodge and Professor Chris Jones. Sky, can you not? <laughs> She's gonna try and jump out the window. Can you not? 
So we've just started second year English as well. In terms of second year English, in first semester you study Anglo-Saxon English and Old English. We study riddles and Anglo-Saxon poetry, not in translation, we have to translate it ourselves. It's a nightmare. And currently we've just started Chaucer as well, and later in the term we'll go on to study Milton's Paradise Lost. Yeah, and honestly, Chaucer, it may seem really difficult, but after you've done Old English, it's a piece of cake. I'm not gonna... What, what? <laughs> it's still difficult. I think people should read the Canterbury Tales to their kids. Yeah, because it's really appropriate, isn't it? With suggestions of prostitution <laughs> and the like. <laughs> and then in second semester, we will study drama and performance. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm really excited too. <gasps> Get down now. Down? She's going out the window. We're studying plays from like the Shakespearean period to, doing, to the present day. Yeah, we're doing like Oscar Wilde. I don't know anything else. No, I don't know any of us. I just know Shakespeare and Oscar Wilde. We study some more. Something happens. And essentially, I think what the English department tried to do over the course of two years is provide you with a full chronological perspective of the literary canon. And we get all the different types of literary forms as well. So we've done poetry, prose, plays, and then in honours, you just go into specifically more what would suit you. So essentially, for most most subjects, lecturing will be a variety of lecturers a week. Three times a week. Sometimes more, depending on what subjects you take. You'll get various lecturers in that week who will be experts in their topics. Once a week, you'll also have a tutorial with your tutor, who stays the same for the entire term, in a small group of people, usually about six or so, who will stay the same for the entire term as well. And in that, you do much closer analysis and much closer conversation about the text than you would in lectures. So history, Tom didn't do any history last year. No. So currently, I'm studying first year modern history history and second year modern history at the same time. It is a lot of reading. I would say on average history here is about 100 pages of reading a week with primary text and secondary text that you have to read. When you do modern history there are more sources so there's a lot more reading that you can do on it and I say this because I've done both modern and medieval history and medieval history is significantly less reading. With modern history especially second semester and first year there are a lot of concepts that you need to understand such as like avant-garde nationalism and these kind of terms they take <laughs> not excited for that. So the university history department covers three areas of history, ancient history, medieval history, and modern history. But here in St Andrews, we start it in around 1450. We work right up to the present day again. And again, much like in English, it's three lectures a week, tutorial group, 50% coursework with two essays, and then the exam at the end of the term. Well, actually this year in medieval history, we have a presentation. It's 15% of the whole grade. And then we have the essay that's now worth 35%. So history in first year, in medieval history, we did the period of 300 to 1000. It was really interesting for me because I'd never studied that period of history before. And I learned so many things that I didn't know before. We looked into the Empress Theodora and all these really interesting concepts that I'd never knew about. And I really enjoyed it. It was great. I found a real passion for hagiographies. Hey, Oh my gosh. We look so nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> and then second semester, I did medieval and modern. Medieval second semester was Scotland, England, and the British Empire and Isles from about the Norman Conquest to 1400. Not that it wasn't interesting. <laughs> modern was a really interesting module. It focuses on a lot of different things from revolution, modern transportation, political regimes. I'm doing Persian this year. Yeah, let's talk about languages. Both studied languages, actually. Persian is the smallest department in the entire university. Is that actually? Yes. Oh. We've got eight people. That's quite good, though, because it's like an actual like class that you'd have in school, basically, again. Yeah. Languages here are definitely smaller than other lectures that you'd go to for, like, arts subjects or science subjects. Okay. So in terms of ancient Greek, we only had, like, in first term, about 20. So everybody knew everybody quite well, unlike in other lectures in which you don't really know many people, necessarily, because you could have, like, 200 people in a lecture. Languages in St Andrews, they are intense. You receive a lot more lectures a week in language classes and so. And because it's so small... It's more individualised to what you struggle with. Lecturers and the teachers definitely pick up on what you need help with. Because I wouldn't really call it a lecture. It's more of like a language class that you'd experience in school. So it's definitely more school-oriented than lecture-based oriented. With the essays, every subject, I'm pretty sure, has a different referencing style that they want you to follow, which was really fun when I had three different references styles for three different modules. That's seriously what you're going to talk about, the <laughs> referencing styles of departments. What do you 
want me to say. <laughs> Essays require research, which is pretty obvious. <laughs> so, I don't need to be saying this. So we have two exam seasons in St Andrews. The first one is at the end of first term before the Christmas break in December. Oh, there's a really long meow. Currently at the moment we have two exam seasons. The first one is at the end of the first term in December, just before the Christmas break, which we really like because it basically means that we get a full Christmas six week break without having to do any work or any revision. The second one is in May at the end of the second term. That one is a longer exam season. You get a longer period to revise. You get two weeks. We can talk about how we met. I don't want to talk about how we met. It's a weird story. We were introduced by a mutual friend. Who introduced us? Lily. Lily introduced does. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we were a couple of weeks into the first semester of English. And then we kind of didn't really talk for the next couple lectures until one day our mutual friend was not in that lecture. I was already sat down and then Tom came in and he was like, I really need to pee. <laughs> Wait, had we already met by that point? Yeah. Oh, I thought time I really needed to pee was the first time I met you. No! <laughs> So I do not know our relationship is. It is so <laughs> offensive. We didn't really talk like outside of lectures ever. We didn't have each other like on any social media. Equally, or he didn't know my name <laughs> yeah. for a couple of months. You know when it gets to the point and you can't ask what somebody's name is? She had told me her name. I don't know if you like if I'd listened or what. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know Kiana's name <coughs> until about November when you said let's add each other on social media. And then we basically just became good friends from there. You know what I think kind of cemented our friendship was me sending you my review of the module yeah because <laughs> you were like yeah this is someone that I <laughs> this is my person <laughs> and then from second semester onwards we just like started hanging out more friendships in terms of people who you make in lectures is interesting our friendship was really interesting i don't have i don't think i have a, a friendship with anyone else like how we became yeah friends. it's an odd way of doing it but it's very rare i think that people become close friends with people who they meet in lectures because i think it's definitely more based around who you live with and like society events and like sports events and stuff. I wish I could say that I know and I'm close with people from tutorials, but I'm not. It's just not how it is, but I think that might change in honors. Okay. You're doing much more specialized subject, so I think you can find a lot of more common ground with people. I enjoy studying in general. Nerd. <laughs> I enjoy tutorials where there are smart people in the class. I've never been in one of those. Yeah, I really like the flexible degree structure. It's given us a lot of options and a lot of abilities to try out different subjects and different things that I didn't think I'd be able to try. So this is not strictly academic related, but I really like the fact that your professors and lecturers, they treat you like human beings. The relationship between student and lecturer definitely changes compared to how it is at school, undoubtedly. They're so much more lovely, but it's a different dynamic. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and that it gave you a little bit more insight into us as individuals and the subjects that we take. Thank you for watching. See you Bye. later, guys.